So the first question is describe the characteristic properties of two amino acids. And the four that you should remember are amino acids linked to form proteins. The second point, they are amphoteric, they act as buffers. Third point, they have an isoelectric point. And finally, they exist as dipolar ions or zwitter ions. So next, amino acids are linked in the primary structure by a peptide bond. In the secondary structure, it's hydrogen bonding. And the tertiary structure, I've chosen ionic bonds and van der Waals forces. Again, the same question, primary structures, peptide bonds or covalent bonds. Secondary is hydrogen bonding. The next question is describing the tertiary structure of proteins. So it's the folding of the secondary structure to form a 3D structure of the protein. And the bonds or interactions responsible for the tertiary structure are disulfide bridges. The next one is hydrogen bonds. And after that, we have ionic bonds and van der Waals forces. The next question is a bit more complex as it asks for the interactions and the atoms that are joined together. So we have van der Waals forces between nonpolar groups. Second is ionic bonding between charged groups. Next is hydrogen bonding between nitrogen and oxygen or hydrogen and nitrogen. Next is a disulfide bridge between atoms of sulfur, which is S, two sulfur atoms, and then peptide bonds between uh, side chains that have a COH group and an NH2 group. So this question asks you to deduce the number of tripeptides that could be formed by using all three of the above amino acids. So let's call the amino acids A, B, and C. The different orders we could have are ABC, ACB, BCA, B A C C A B and C B A for a total of six different tripeptides. So here are the structures of two different tripeptides, and each one differs in the order of the amino acids, and I've highlighted the peptide bonds in red. So I'm going to show you now how to draw a dipeptide formed from the two amino acids, serine and cysteine. I'm going to draw the structures of them first, and then I'll show you how they bond and I'll identify the peptide bond. So the OH from one and the H from another bond in a condensation reaction. We lose a molecule of water, which I'll show you later. And I'm just going to draw in the, the dipeptide now. Um, and there it is. And there's the molecule of water, and there's the peptide bond. Because the question asks for two different dipeptides, I'm just going to show you how you could draw a different one. I'm just going to swap over the R groups uh, to show you a different dipeptide, because the order of the amino acids is different. If you have ever have this question in an exam, make sure you write out the two structural formulas of two different dipeptides. Okay, so there's the second dipeptide you could have. This question is easier if you work backwards. So it asks you part B for the structure of serine at the isoelectric point. So at the isoelectric point, the amino acids have a positive and negative end, and they are known as the Zwitter ion. So going back to part one of this question, you have to deduce the structure of serine in a solution with a pH of two. The isoelectric point is 5.7. pH two is below the isoelectric point. So the amino acid at pH two is going to have a positive charge. And the second part of the question asks for the structure with a pH of 12. It's above the isoelectric point, so it's going to have a negative charge. So next is writing equations to show how glycine can act as a buffer. So acting as an acid, you should draw the uh, Zwitter ion, the condensed structural form of the Zwitter ion, and reacting with OH negative, it's going to donate a proton from the NH3 plus to give you NH2, CH2, CO negative, and H2O. And then acting as a base, again, you're going to draw the Zwitter ion, but this time reacting with H3O plus. 
So the H3O plus will donate a proton to the amino acid. Therefore, you'll end up with uh, NH3 plus C CH2COOH plus water. And the final part of the question, it resists a change in pH when small amounts of acid or base are added. So the next question is about gel electrophoresis and part A, part 1 says how the amino acid spots may be developed and that's using an organic dye called ninhydrin. And then part 2 is predict which amino acid is present at spot C. So it's glutamic acid because the isoelectric point is below the pH of the buffer. And secondly, it loses the H plus ion, the hydron hydronium ion, to become negatively charged. And then part three, one characteristic of an amino acid at its isoelectric point has no overall charge because it forms a Zwitter ion. So the first question is, the structure of protein can be analyzed using paper chromatography. Uh, describe the process the protein must undergo. So you boil with a concentrated strong acid, uh, HCl or H2SO4, and you want to separate the protein into the amino acids, and you do that by breaking the peptide bond. And the next question is explain how paper chromatography can be used to identify individual amino acids. So first, you a uh, mixture of amino acids is spotted on filter paper or uh, chromatographic paper. Then you place in a solvent which will rise up the paper. Next, the amino acids will separate depending on the different solubilities in the mobile phase and the stationary phase. Next, you'll, you'll use an organic dye, ninhydrin, uh, to stain the amino acids, and most of them will turn purple. And then finally, you'll measure the retention factor, the RF value, and compare to known values. So, for this question, it's the same as the one we looked at before. It's basically, how do you hydrolyze a protein? And identify the bond that's broken. So you heat or boil with concentrated HCl or H2SO4 and the bond broken is the peptide bond. And then next is explain how amino acids can be identified using electrophoresis. So the mixture of amino acids is spotted in a gel. Next a voltage or potential difference is applied. The amino acids move in the electric field and that depends on the pH of the buffer which determines the charge on the amino acid and whether or not it moves in the electric field and how much it moves. Then you develop using ninhydrin, the organic dye. And then you measure the distance that the amino acids have moved and you compare to known values again. So in this question, we have arginine, glutamic acid, and glycine, and they undergo electrophoresis at pH 6. So that's important. Using table 20 of the data booklet, identify the amino acid that moves towards the positive electrode and the negative electrode. Actually, it's now table 19. And um, this is where I've got these um, this data from here, okay? So we're at pH 6.0. So for arginine, um, the pH of the buffer, okay, which is pH 6.0, is below the isoelectric point. Because these are the isoelectric points here. So for arginine, it's 10.8. For glutamic acid, pH 6 is above the isoelectric point.
and for glycine pH 6.0 is the same as the isoelectric point. So how do we determine the charge? Well, so we look at glycine first. So at the isoelectric point, which is the same as the pH of the buffer solution, 6.0, what we're going to have is the Zwitter ion. So we're basically going to have um, H3N plus on this side. And then this side is going to be COO negative. So because glycine forms a Zwitter ion, there'll be no movement in the electric field. If we do the same thing for arginine, and because the pH 6 is below the isoelectric point, what's going to happen is a hydrogen is going to join onto this part here, leaving arginine with an overall positive charge. And if we look at glycine, the Zwitter ion would have this group and this group here. Uh, because this pH 6 is above the isoelectric point, which is 3.2, it's going to lose one of these hydrogens from here. Um, we're just going to have the H2N group. So it's going to have an overall negative charge. So which amino acid will be attracted to the positive electrode? It will be the one with the negative charge. So that will be glutamic acid. And then uh, arginine will be attracted to the negative electrode because it has a positive charge. 